Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship um, on this our self denial Sunday. Uh, thank you to the songsters for getting our meeting off to su- such a such a joyful start. I think the program notes or the notes in the in things say to sing with joyful abandonment, and I think that's exactly what we've just had. So, thank you very much, songsters. What a super start to our worship today. Okay, we begin with a few announcements. Um, following the meeting this morning, uh, there will be tea and coffee fellowship. Something else to celebrate. Um, You may also have heard Rosie has organised a cake sale, so it gets even better um, to raise money for the Salvation Army's work with those affected um, by the war in Ukraine. Um, Rosie, along with a number of other youngsters and one or two of our more senior members, have baked some very tasty-looking treats. Um, Please do support them in this. Um, After Cakes, the band will be heading up to the precinct to play for a while there as well, so feel free to come along and enjoy the music as well. Uh, Next Sunday, worship again at the usual time, 10.30, Majors Andrew and Valerie leading us. Um, Reminder, final reminder of the message from Catherine now, next Saturday, 12th of March, 7 o'clock, our senior band will at last be presenting a festival of music. Um, It's entitled Coventry City Band at home and you're invited to come along um, enjoy Salvation Army music both older and newer um, entry is free for everybody although there's an opportunity um, to give to the Salvation Army's Ukraine appeal as well uh, Valerie's asked me to mention that the notes for the second week of the Lent Bible study are available for you to pick up um, on the table in the foyer on your way out and finally um, some sad news in case you haven't heard Um, On Friday night, Derek Harrison was promoted to to glory. Um, I know that you'll want to keep Monica, uh, Miriam, Rob, all of the family in your prayers at at this sad and difficult time. Um, So please do keep them in your prayers over this next little while. Okay, before I hand over to Majors Andrew and Valerie, can I ask you to join me as I pray? Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come together again um, in your name and to worship you. As we spend this time together, help us each to take the time to listen to you, to be with you, to draw close to you. Thank you, because even in these times of of sadness and difficulty for, for so many in our world, we know that you're there sharing your love in each of these situations. Help us to show and share your love um, with all of those around us. We ask that you'll be with Andrew and Valerie as they lead us in worship today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see you all here in worship. And uh, we pray that God will bless what we have to offer to him, but he'll also bless us in return. It's good to see one or two again that are back after not being with us for some time. I'm especially great to, it's especially great to see Andy at the back there. And uh, if you haven't said hello to Andy, do before you leave, um, because we've missed him, haven't we? Um, But yeah, it's good to see all of you here in worship this morning. We're going to sing together a lovely song of praise. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Let's stand and have a good sing together. Thank you. 
Amen. What a wonderful start to our worship this morning. Now we're going to kind of split our prayer time into two. And we're going to commence by thinking about here and our loved ones, those within our church family who at the moment are going through some tough stuff. We've had mentioned the family of Derek and we especially lift to God Monica and their three girls and the family. Hard for the family when you lose someone, but actually it's a blessing for Derek because he struggled for quite some time and now he's with his Lord, free from pain and at peace. And so we pray that God will bless that family. We think of those who have had hospital appointments this week and I particularly want to mention Sandra Payne who has had her operation on Friday and uh, she's now gone to stay with her brother uh, who is going to look after her for a few days. But just remember Sandra. And as we think of Sandra, we think of her sister, Mo, who has, uh, is fighting cancer, giving it her all at this moment. And uh, we just pray for her in that fight. There are others who have been and had procedures this week. We think of Roger. And there will be those that you will think of. And we just ask that the Lord would come and meet each one at their point of need, just now. There are some missing because they're unwell, um, colds and flu, and we just pray that God will surround them. And as perhaps they're watching from home, the, the, the service that is being recorded this morning, we just pray that God's blessing will be with them. And so let's just pray for ourselves and for our families just now. And Lord, we ask that you would bless all for whom we pray. There are so many of our family and friends who need you. And we ask that you would come to each one and be to them all that they need right now. We thank you for your faithfulness to us each day. And we thank you for this privilege that we have of coming and worshipping you. But also fellowshipping with each other in your name. And so Lord, just surround we pray all those for whom we ask a special blessing just now. Continue to be with us and help us in the coming week. Be with us in all the challenges that we face. But help us to notice the many blessings that bring us joy throughout each day. And Lord, just hear our prayers for each other. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. We're not now going to turn our thoughts and our prayers to the Ukraine crisis that is still ongoing. And uh, we've put together a PowerPoint that we invite you to watch and to pray with just now. Thank you.
invite you in the attitude of prayer for those of you who wish to do so to come and write a card it might just be a word you want to put or it might be a prayer that you want to write and, uh, and then when you've written the prayer if you place it in the basket here on the mercy seat these prayers will then be used during our prayer meetings this week and then they'll be hung upon the prayer tree for anybody that comes into our building to look at and pray along with. So in these moments, come and use this table and the cards provided to, to write your own prayers. we pray <clears throat> Lord when we wonder what we can do <clears throat> for the people that we care about and see on the news 
for all those within this world who are going through difficulties, but in particular at the moment within Ukraine. We thank you that we have the power of prayer. And we pray believing and in faith that you are there amongst the people. And as we pray for an end to this conflict, we also pray that you will heal, restore, and bless the people affected. Very often our focus is upon the Ukraine people, and it should be. But there must be so many peace-loving people living in Russia. And we know that our own church is there, salvationists and their officers, who mustn't agree with what is going on, and yet... The hands are tied. Lord, bring your peace, your healing to all who need it just now. And let your love show through the response of others. For we ask it in and through your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now we're going to turn our thoughts for a final time to uh, the self-denial missionary appeal video. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the last of our films for this year's self-denial appeal. This year's self-denial appeal, we're looking at how the Salvation Army around the world is caring for creation and responding to climate change. And today I'll be talking to Victor Mondal in Bangladesh. Victor is in charge of community development projects and his work includes responding to emergencies and preparing for disasters. Bangladesh is frequently cited as one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. It's already one of the most densely populated countries. Poverty is widespread and most of its landmass is close to sea level. Climate scientists predict higher global temperatures, a rise in sea levels and more rainfall during the monsoon season, all of which will make things more difficult for the people of Bangladesh. Good afternoon, Victor. It's uh, so afternoon. lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from uh, Bangladesh. Um, Tell us a little bit about your role within the Salvation Army. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, my main role is community development project in the field, as well as mission support project. So, is a various uh, area we are. Uh, I am working mm. uh, in that uh, in Bangladesh Command. <clears throat> Now, the focus for our self-denial appeal over here in the United Kingdom and Ireland Territory is care for creation. And we're trying to learn from our brothers and sisters around the world about the impact of climate change. What are you seeing in Bangladesh in terms of changes in your weather patterns and the effect of climate change? You know, that, that it is a good question uh, about the climate change. And you know that we are, uh, especially in Bangladesh people, we are facing a lot of problems and uh, we are the victim actually uh, for um, uh, climate change. And uh, we are getting uh, uh, cyclone mm. and we are getting strong uh, and uh, we are getting also uh, flash, uh, flood uh, and rain also mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Our project area um, uh, affected a, a lot. Even our core uh, building was uh, damaged wow. by the arm uh, And uh, where I am living, especially in Joshua area, that arm um, uh, cyclone is hit in, from that area. So actually, those area is very vulnerable area. And mm -hmm. after arm we take a, a project for rebuilding that core. Uh, we got some uh, support 
to distribution food among the community which face problem about the food. Mm. In your territory, I know that you've been innovating and pioneering new ways to do things. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The uh, climate is changing. So we have to think for alternative way how we can survive in that area. So uh, uh, while we are working in the community, we are giving them awareness program. And we sit together with the community people and ask them that, if this is the situation, what is the alternative way that you can grow uh, vegetable and you can earn money and you can doing some fishing. Mm. So they thought, okay, raise your uh, environment of the pond and grow vegetable top of that uh, area that you can get more vegetable from that area. And side by side, you also uh, get fish from that um, pond. Mm. It's really innovating stuff, Victor, and I love that you're working with the community to deal with these changes. How has the pandemic particularly affected your ministry in Bangladesh? When it was hit, everybody was afraid and uh, they have no answer how to um, take uh, action regarding um, uh, COVID. But you know, the service army is for the people. In our project area, there is a lot of people that are starting. So what to do? We have to do something. Then we take an uh, initiative uh, that uh, some relief program, they distributed uh, food uh, package for the community people. Mm. Are things improving now? I mean, in, in many countries because of the vaccine, we're seeing the, the pandemic beginning to kind of settle. What's it like for you in Bangladesh? Most of the people, they got their second dose, but you know that uh, now problem is that the, the third wave is coming. You know, already in our neighboring country, India, is a lot of cases. We we have already some cases already in Bangladesh. So, mm. uh, so they are thinking for that. So you're still facing challenges even at this time. Uh, Victor, thank you so much for your time today. We're so grateful uh, in the busyness of your role that you've spent a bit of time with us and giving us some perspective uh, into your work. We pray God's richest blessing upon you and your ministry. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you to you also and also your team. Thank you. Bless you. Bye. Well, that brings us to the end of our Self-Denial Films. Thanks for joining me over these last few weeks. The Self-Denial Appeal is all about enabling the Salvation Army's mission around the world. And the people I've talked to are doing just that. I've been really inspired by them. There is vital work that needs to be done. And a lot of that work is only possible because of the money that's given through Self-Denial. It was good to hear about new agricultural techniques in Indonesia and hurricane mitigation work in Costa Rica. It's great to see innovations like solar-powered boreholes and sand dams in Kenya. And there's a challenge here for all of us. How are we enabling the mission of the Salvation Army? And how are we caring for God's creation? I loved what Victor from Bangladesh said. The Salvation Army is for the people. We have to do something. And let's remember that this is the Salvation Army's international self-denial appeal. So, while each of us here reflect prayerfully on what we can give, we can remember our sisters and brothers the world over are doing the same. So, as was mentioned there, we pray and hope that you've looked at um, your giving over these past few weeks and today we come to um, our altar service where we can give to those projects where we can support the work of the ongoing Salvation Army um, so hopefully uh, over these weeks you've picked up an envelope um, if not there are some spare ones and, and Glynis has got some for you and just to say too for those of you who are, uh, who are tech savvy or a smart, smartphone you can actually um, scan the QR code on the back and you can pay that way. Just make sure at the end of the process you put that you're paying it to Coventry City Corps and not anyone else, clearly. So that would be good if you can do that. So um, whilst the music, um, Jonathan's going to play some music, and whilst he plays the music, I just say that um, in your own time and prayerfully, you can come and bring your gift and place it here on the altar this morning. So uh, like I say, if you've not got an envelope, let Glynis know, she'll, um, 
practice over there. She'll let you know, give you one. Um, but if not, we'll just listen to music and come in, in your own time and lay your gift here at the altar this morning. Shall we pray? And Lord, be mindful throughout these past few weeks as we've looked at the various areas that the Salvation Army is at work. Areas which are areas which are far worse than anything we could imagine. But yet, you place people there, Lord, with hearts of hearts of compassion and hearts of love for the people that they work with and Lord we just ask in some wonderful and miraculous way the gifts that we hear today and we as a territory give throughout this period will be used in a mighty way to just first of all sustain the programs they're doing but also give them the ability to bring new things to those places so Lord, we ask all these things this morning and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks, for your giving this morning. And I'm going to listen to the songs as they bring their message this morning. It's a song by Howard Davis called The Logic of Love.
his choice for us this morning, beautiful words, I love the Lord who first loved me and he's my master and my friend. Now we're going to sing together and we're going to sing the words, would you, would you be free from your burden of sin, there's power in the blood. And as we sing, we'll invite the youngsters to leave us for their Sunday school. Thank you. Let's stand. blood of the Lamb. Now today is the first Sunday of Lent and uh, we're going to turn our thoughts to the, the usual scripture reading that we would have at this time of the year and that's to be found in Matthew chapter 4 and Adam is going to come and share that with us just now. Thank you for asking me to uh, read this Bible verse. Uh, Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Jesus is tested in the wilderness. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift, up, lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took the very high mountain 
took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Amen. Thank you, Adam. And uh, we're going to look at those words in a little while. But we're now going to sing again uh, the lovely words, Jesus, what a beautiful name. And as we sing, we're going to invite you to give in the offering. Um, so remain seated, um, sing the words, take note of the words, but give in your offering just now. Thank you. Father, accept these gifts, we pray, and bless them mightily, and bless those who have given, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to turn to the band. Thank you. Our music this morning um, uses the words of John Newton and song 78 in our songbook. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Dear name, the rock on which I build, my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled, with boundless stores of grace.
Dan, for your contribution, your message to us this morning. Before we look at God's word, we're going to just turn to a lovely song. It's that song, Purify My Heart, Let Me Be As Gold and Precious Silver. Purify My Heart, Let Me Be As Gold. And it's looking at those words that uh, Adam shared with us this morning. It's that refining fire that we each need in our lives. So we're going to sing through these two verses and the choruses before we look at the word this morning. Like I say, this morning we're looking at God's refining in terms of gold itself. So are you wearing something gold this morning? Perhaps a gold ring? Do you know how it got to that shiny, smart-looking state and so that muddy rock that it came from? Well, I'm no expert, but you can get gold that is 99.9% pure by putting it into an electrolyte bath and applying an electric current. The gold dissolves from the impurities and can be then extracted. Or you can run chlorine gas through liquid gold. And this chlorine combines with the impurities and the compounds rise to the top, but this only makes it 99.5% pure. When it comes to gold, we're particularly interested to know how many carrots there might be within the ring you have. And gold has an amazing property, doesn't it? Like not tarnishing been able to be beaten to such a fine extent into gold leaf. And it reflects back light in an amazing way, which makes it not only very useful in large office windows, but can make the dome of the cathedral that is covered with gold leaf mosaic seem as though it reflects the very light of heaven itself. But it's the refining process that we're thinking about this morning. That process by which the pure gold is extracted from the bits that surround it. So it then emerges glowing and perfect. 
The word used for temptation in the gospel has the sense of being like a refiner's fire. It's a testing, it's a, a sifting, a purging of all that is not really gold. It is a way for something to emerge as its true self, without any impurities or alien matters. And it's the same idea as you find the story of Job in the Old Testament. If you know the story, he was tested by the devil to see whether extreme suffering and pain would make him deny God. Deny the core of pure faith at his centre. Then moving to the New Testament, Jesus too was tested to see whether he was truly pure gold, truly the Son of God. It was all very new for Jesus. You see at the Jordan River, a voice had come from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved. And the scripture says that Jesus went straight from that baptism to the desert to be tempted by the devil. And the temptations were precisely about what it meant to be the son of God. As the word said this morning, if you are the son of God, as, a dem as the devil is tempting him, what was at stake was Jesus' true identity. The, the pure gold of his very nature and his relationship with his heavenly father. And this is what had to be sifted in the refiner's fire so that he could be revealed to the world. And so much of it was about purging others' expectations of Jesus so he could reveal what true sonship was all about. You see, Jesus was to be confronted by expectations at both ends of the spectrum. You see, on one hand, there were those who remembered his human background. You see, he was a carpenter's son from Nazareth, literally the local chipping. Some would say, who does he think he is? Claiming to be special. And his family too were pretty dubious about him as well. Why couldn't he just, you know, just settle down and, and do a nice, normal job? Live a nice, normal Jewish life? But then on the other side of all this, there's expectations that the devil tempts him with. If you are the son of God. Well, you must really be a son of God and be seen to be one. No half measures. You have to prove yourself and I'll, I'm here to help you. Every time, every time I read the temptations of Jesus and the way the devil is tempting him, I almost see the devil as a, as a kind of spin doctor, a marketing manager. As he says, you know, together we can make this thing work. And you'll be the oddest thing since Moses. But in a way, you can understand the devil. He was only tempting Jesus to be the sort of Messiah that people might expect. He says, you are the son of God. So use your power to show that you are. Turn stones into bread, grasp control of the nations, make God rescue you from harm. Was there a core of pure gold that could survive the devil's testing and refining? You know, it's easy enough to trivialize temptation. It gets used in brands of chocolate we might say naughty, but nice. But if you think of the refiner's fire, it gets rather more serious and a lot more painful. It makes us think, am I just living up to other humans' expectations? What is my 
real identity. The identity that I was given at my dedication, a child of God, beloved by God. Am I preparing to let that pure gold be me? Am I prepared to accept that God has named me? Or am I sucked into expectations that I should be this or should be that? Look like this, look like that. Wear this or wear that. Am I controlled by the expectations that I should be successful and capable? That I should be influential to those around me? That I should be a winner and not a loser? It's easy, you see, to forget God and conform to the expectations of the age. The church as a whole is often guilty of this. We expect to be powerful and successful with influence. But we have to think about how we operate and find a balance between trying to grow in uh, gospel ways on one hand and trying to become popular and influential on the other hand. If it tempts us to use ways and means that are wrong, then it's not of God. See, we are called to be faithful, not popular. And we must seek out the intimate relationships with God which treads the desert path with full dependence only on God. Only then will the pure gold of our faith be truly tested. So the second point is looking at Jesus and the refiner's fire. You know, it was so tempting for Jesus, you know, the crown of popularity rather than the crown of thorns. The temptation in this story is so poignant. The devil takes Jesus to Jerusalem, to that pinnacle on the temple, on top of the temple. Here, this is where the Messiah comes to so triumphantly, showing that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, he says to him. Show your power. Jump off and command God to send the angels to protect you. That time of refining, of testing, of temptation in the desert was the first step towards revealing the pure gold that he was made of. He refused to play the power game. He refused to live by any expectations made of him by others. The writer of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews 4 verse 15, If every respect Jesus has been tested as we are, yet without sin. In every respect Jesus has been tested as we are, yet without sin. If we are tempted by false expectations of us, if we are tempted to a power that is not ours, if we are tempted by suffering and pain, by loneliness and desolation, by others' betrayal and abandonment, tempted to abandon the name that God has given us, child of God, then let us pray that we may come through the refiner's fire, utterly dependent upon God, placing all things in God's hands. As we come to the beginning of Lent, this first Sunday in Lent, let us commit ourselves to that faithful dependence. When we fast and feel hungry, let us know that we depend on God alone. And we are empty of ourselves. When we pray, let us know that we worship God alone and not the expectations of the world or those around us. And let us know that we are called to give ourselves in love as Christ did. Again, Hebrews and verse 2 says, For the sake of the joy that we set was set before him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God, the true Son, pure gold from the refiner's fire.
Shall we pray? Lord, as the work of refining takes place in producing pure gold, we would ask that for each of us today, that same process will take place in our lives. That in going through the process, we can become pure gold for you. Lord, be with us throughout this coming week. And in the days that lie ahead, and make us into the people who will expand your kingdom wherever you have placed us. We ask and pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. In closing, we're going to come and turn to our final song. And it's that song, Before the Throne of God Above. I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me then depart. Let's stand and sing this song together in closing this morning. say before we share our final prayer that if you still would like to write a prayer the table is still there for you to do just that and in conclusion I want to share these words from a lovely song by Chris by water reign in me sovereign Lord reign in me captivate my heart let your kingdom come establish there your throne let your will be done Lord with us now and forevermore we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.